The Lord be with you. Thank you for joining us here at Christ Our Savior Lutheran Church in Holland, Michigan for the whole counsel of God. We begin our new work week this Monday the 10th, Monday the 10th, with a new worksheet and a new book of the Bible. We'll be in 1 Corinthians now for the next couple of weeks. So today we're going to have the first chapter, the first chapter of 1 Corinthians. We'll also continue using the Pray For Us calendar as we always do. Remember the version we, translation that we use is the English Standard Version translation of the Bible. And I use the Lutheran Study Bible and I use the devotions and prayers from that as well. So this is for us to hear God's word together and pray together. Here at Christ our Savior Lutheran Church in Holland and all throughout the world. So let us hear God's word from 1 Corinthians, the first chapter, and pray together. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Speak, Lord, for your servants here. Please show us now your ways, that we may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of our own that comes from the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ. Your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Give us life, O Lord, according to your word, and we will declare your greatness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We begin at 1 Corinthians, the first verse, verses 1, whoops, verses 1 through 9, Paul's greeting and thanksgiving. Paul called by the will of God to be an apostle of Christ Jesus and our brother Sotheus to the church of God that is in Corinth. To those sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints together, with all those who are in every place, call upon the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that was given you in Christ Jesus, that in every way you were enriched in him in all speech and all knowledge, even as the testimony about Christ was confirmed among you so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will sustain you to the end, guiltless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. So far the word. Paul highlights the strengths of the congregation, strengths God extends to all believers by his grace. We rejoice in our relationship to God. He has called us, he has sanctified us, and he will sustain us. We pray. We hear your call, Heavenly Father, in the gospel of your Son. Keep us to the end. In your name we pray. Amen. We continue now at verse 10, entitled, Divisions in the Church. I appeal to you, brothers, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be united in the same mind and in the same judgment. For it has been reported to me by Chloe's people that there is quarreling among you, my brothers. What I mean is that each one of you says, I follow Paul, or I follow Apollos, or I follow Cephas, or I follow Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you except Crispus and Gaius, so that no one may say that you were baptized in my name. I did baptize also the household of Stephanius. Beyond that, I, I don't know whether I baptized anyone else. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, and not with words of eloquent wisdom, lest the cross of Christ be emptied of its power. So far the word of the Lord. Divisions in the church are a denial of the one baptism into Christ who was crucified for all. His faithful servants preach the gospel and are not to become the objects of unhealthy de de devotion. The triune God alone is the object of our faith and the object of our hope. We pray. Grant us such faithful ministers, dear Lord, who baptize and preach in your name and authority. In your name we pray. Amen. And now the balance of chapter 1, verses 18 through 31, Christ the wisdom and power of God. For the word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, 
I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God the world did not know God through wisdom, it pleased God through the folly of what we preach to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks seek wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and folly to Gentiles. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For consider your calling, brothers. Not many of you were wise according to worldly standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, even things that are not, to bring to nothing things that are, so that no human being might boast in the presence of God. And because of him you are in Christ Jesus, who became to us wisdom from God, righteousness and sanctification and redemption, so that as it was written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. So far the word of the Lord. We should avoid pride and boasting about everything we do for God or for others. We bring nothing but sin into our relationship with God, but receive all good things from him. We pray. Heavenly Father, give your people grace to recognize that all praise belongs to you alone. In your name we pray. Amen. As we continue in prayer on this 10th day of the month, we pray for Lutheran congregations in Latin America, in the Dominican Republic and all of Latin America, that they would be prepared to care for and support their pastors, both physically, mentally, and spiritually. We pray this in Jesus' in blessed name. Amen. O merciful Father, you have wounded your own son to bring us the eternal healing of your love. Bless the sick and those who suffer those wounded in body or mind, and those dying, and all those we now name to you in our hearts. As well as Marilyn and Chris, Art and Bonnie, George and Jane, Karen, Mary Ann, Helen, Clifford, Melissa, Rick, and Art. In your own time, grant to them healing according to your will and sustain them until the day of the resurrection of the body. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things, O Lord, and whatever else you know that we need, we pray you to grant us for the sake of the mercies and by the merits of our Savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and he sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen.